Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits. Inside this tutorial, we are going to be editing Milky Way photography inside of Lightroom. So let's get into it. All right, I have a photo here by Atanas Andinov. We're going to go through step by step in how I would edit it. Hopefully, you'll get a few tips and editing tricks to take into your own Milky Way photography. So, for starters, the first thing that I want to do before I jump in and start making changes is I want to know what I'm working with to see how much information I can pull out of the photo. Because if the information isn't there, if things have been clipped in the blacks or the whites, I'm not going to be able to get them back. So that's going to determine how I approach editing this photo. You can see here on the right, under the histogram panel, it tells me the image settings when this photo was taken. It was taken at ISO 100 with an 11 millimeter lens at f3.5 with an exposure of 30 seconds. So this is great. It was taken at ISO 100. That's really key because that means it's going to be the cleanest possible image out of the camera. It'll have the least amount of noise here when I try and actually draw details out and the camera will grab more details simply because it's at a cleaner ISO. So make sure you're starting with a good photo to begin with. That's my advice number one for night photography and Milky Way photography. You want to make sure you start with a photo that in camera was as clean as possible. We also have an exposure of 30 seconds you can see that we have these car trails here from a car that went by during the exposure process and it illuminated some of this cliff so we have some information here. Now it doesn't really matter to me that this is a little blown out because obviously it's going to stay white in the final edit. Okay, that out of the way, what I'm going to do is just grab my exposure and grab it and take it all the way up here. Now I'm not doing this because I'm actually going to edit it like that, I just want to see how much information is in the photo. And as you can see, what previously was completely black has shown up to be a lot of information. We've got lots of great stars up here, we've got even some city haze maybe in the distance, I don't know what that is. Lots of information here in the gravel, this hillside. We're going to have some issues if we zoom in over here. Oh, come now. If we zoom in, you can see that we have also clipped, it looks like, this hill, and so we're going to have some issues getting detail out of there, but we'll just take that as it comes. But we're good to go. That's the main thing. We have information. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just get a general exposure for kind of my foreground of the scene, because that is going to just determine everything else. So probably around there looks good to me. That's pretty nice. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take the highlights, just drag them back just a little bit and see what happens. So it's it's worth experimenting. You can see that I am getting rid of the highlights in this trail a little bit, taking down the clipping. However, I'm also losing stars. I don't know if you're noticing, but just dragging those highlights up, I can see way more stars. So I actually would like to use that tool to my advantage. I'm going to have to take an adjustment layer, grab my brush here, and we're just going to make a blank brush. I'm going to brush right on this trail. So you can press O if you want to see what you're doing. You can see that red highlight area is showing me exactly where I'm brushing. And I'm going to brush onto this trail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the highlights down on this trail, and kind of the surrounding areas that are peaking here. So go like that, make sure everything has been drawn on. Okay. Now, if I were doing this not for the sake of time, I would maybe be a little more caref careful, but that's good enough for now. We can press O again to hide that mask. Open up my settings here, and we're just going to drag those highlights down, and even our exposure maybe a little bit down. There we go, our whites. Okay, add some clarity here, and some sharpness. Take our blacks up. Just a little bit. Okay, so here's before and after. That's great. I'm going to take my highlights back a little bit. Somewhere around there. So here's before and here's after. That's where we've gotten to. Now we've lost some of the saturation in this car trail, so I'm going to add some back in here. Like that. And we can even warm it up if we want to. Just experiment and see. The white balance tool is actually super helpful for this. Okay, great. We've got the car trail. Let's say that we're happy around there. Next step, we want to bring out these stars. How do we do that? Well, I'm going to make another adjustment brush. And I'm going to start with just resetting it. We're going to paint on here. You can press O to make sure you can see what you're doing. We're just going to paint on the sky. Now, I'm not going to paint this bottom section yet. I'm going to kind of feather that in. So I'll turn my feather up and my flow down. And I'm just going to kind of blend that in because this area of the sky is way lighter than the rest of it. And so I know that if I make adjustments, it's going to be too intense if I try and do the same area. 
Okay, so we've got no changes happening now. What I'm going to do is just for the sake of time, I've made a preset here that comes in our Genesis pack. It's called Add Texture. I'm going to select that. You can see all those stars that just popped out. Well, now I'm going to drag my shadows up here and clarity. And you can go ahead and just copy these settings. You don't have to have the brush, obviously. You can just copy this, a little bit of contrast, a little highlight, little shadows, some clarity, even a little dehaze. You can see what a massive difference that makes. Here's before and after. Wow, unreal, right? So what I'm going to do is just very gently, I'm going to paint in the corner of this image now kind of blend things in. Okay, now for this very bottom area along the corner, I'm going to make sure auto mask is selected and just go along this edge and hopefully auto mask is going to auto detect the edge of that cliff side so that I can get a nice mask without too much going over. Okay, that is looking pretty good. Okay, next step, I'm just going to adjust a few things in here. Maybe I'll take my clarity up a little bit more. And my whites up. Let's just see what happens. There we go. Now, one thing I could do even a little bit more if I wanted. I'm noticing some inconsistency here. Just let me paint in there a little bit. Is I could take my blacks up as well and just see what happens. And when you're editing night photography, a lot of it is trial and error. Not every photo behaves the same way, and so you're going to find some things work sometimes, other things do not, others. Take that back. And now the last thing I want to do is I'm going to take this temperature, and I'm going to add some blue by dragging it towards blue, and you'll see that the sky looks more like a kind of spacey sky. If I take it way too far, you'll see it's pretty dramatic. That's way further than we'd ever want. But just a little bit is going to give it kind of that bluish green that we associate with outer space. So I want to do that. And maybe a little bit more down here. I might actually make a new layer now just for the corner of this image because I think it's kind of ugly with that orange going on down here from the city skyline or whatever it is that's doing that. Light pollution. That's why when you do Milky Way photography, you want to make sure, if you can, get away from the city. And you're going to get more stars, more detail, more everything if you're able to do that. And we'll just drag it on here. And you'll see I've just added a little bit more blue to try, try and counteract what's going on here. I'm going to add a little contrast, see what happens. Maybe even desaturate. Good, that's looking better. Okay. So lastly, I'm going to go down to my detail settings. You know what? This is looking a little smushy too. So we'll see if we can even get some detail out of these trees here. You see on the edge, I'm just going to go here to maybe one, two, three. Okay, one to two. One to three was too generous. Okay, and now I'm going to just reset this brush. And I'm going to go to just some clarity. Turn my auto mask off. Take my flow back up, press O so I can see what I'm doing. And all I'm going to do is just follow the edge of these trees. Because I wanted, what I want to do is try and just define this edge better. So I'm hoping just by adding a little clarity, I'll be able to make it seem like it's sharper. Without having to bring the exposure up and do a whole lot of work. And I'll do the same thing with the rest of this, with this tree up here. These cliffs. Okay, now, let's see if we can get away with it. Zoom in so I can see what I'm doing again. And you can see the problem is it's obviously making these areas around the mask brighter. So what I can try and do is just take my contrast down. That might blend it a little bit or make it worse, of course. Try and find a happy medium here. There we go. So here's before and after. You can see it's just to find the line a little bit more. And I can even take my sharpness up just a bit. Okay, now the last thing in this image that's really still bothering me is these rocks right here. We've kind of got some intense reds going on. Now there's a few ways we could approach this. We could go down to the HSL panel and we could desaturate the reds. Maybe see how that looks. Maybe take the luminance down in them a little bit. 
We can even change the hue, make them maybe a little bit more orangey. So we have kind of a teal and orange color going on. And that's all fine and good. What I am noticing is down here, we have the green reflected from the lights of this car. And I'm not really liking the look of that. I find if you can keep your colors more minimal, if we have just red and blue as the colors in this image, it's going to be more powerful if we have this smattering of green. So I'm going to just try desaturating the greens and the yellows and see if that'll get rid of that. Perfect, maybe not quite that far. We don't want it to look way too edited. You might be looking at this and saying, of course, it looks way too edited already, but that's all right. This is more for demonstration than to show you the perfect edit. Okay, that's looking pretty good. You can see the difference that makes. Here's before and here's after. So just getting rid of that green lends a little bit, I think, of visual cohesion. And I am still not really impressed with the outline of this hill. If we can get that nice and crisp, we will feel way better. So I'm going to try one more. We'll grab this, see if we can maybe use the dehaze tool. And I really want to emphasize this hill here, so I'm going to go to a new brush. And right over here, I'm just going to grab that hill. Now the only problem with doing this kind of a edit intensive tutorial is obviously you're having to wait quite a while to see the changes that are happening. But if I go ahead down here and I go to just reset all of these at once, there's before and there is after. And I think that is an improvement. We can even take our exposure down a little, something like that. Now, I feel like this tree is just the most iconic part of the photo, or bush, or whatever it is. So I'm going to take one last try at drawing out a little bit more detail around the edges of this. Something like that. Great. And we are looking pretty good. If I wanted, I could zoom in here and just see if we need to add some denoise. Probably we've got some color noise going on. You can see a little bit of splotches of magenta and purple going on in here. So if we go to our detail panel, we can just look at our sharpening, hold down Alt for mask, and of course, this is going to be pretty laggy, but we can drag this mask up and see which parts of the image we want sharpened and which we do not. The white areas are receiving sharpening, the black areas are not, so we drag that up until only parts of the image are being sharpened, and we make sure we take our color um, noise reduction up so that we're smoothing out. You can see if we zoom in here on the preview that we have some weird banding going on. So we just take the color noise reduction up and our smoothness up and that'll smooth those out. Now if you want a more descriptive version of what the sharpening and noise reduction panels do inside Lightroom and how you can get the most out of them, make sure to check out my incredibly in-depth video tutorial I did. I'll make sure to link to it here. And for your reference, we can now go over to our grid view, go to our full screen mode, and here is our original photo. Here is once we applied our edits, and finally once we applied our sharpening and noise reduction just to bring out a little bit more detail and clean up that color. Now if you want to, you can take it one step further, and that is by going back to our adjustment brush, and we're going to do one extra thing, and that's just going to enhance the highlights of this Milky Way, just by taking my exposure up here, I've got some clarity, and I'm just going to brush in. You see the Milky Way is already outlined in here, I'm just going to follow that with my brush and just emphasize it. Now this is going to look very silly at first, but what I'm doing is I'm just setting it kind of at a higher setting than I normally would use, and then I'm going to dial it back from there just so I can see what I'm doing. So I take my time here, you can see there's some little trails around there. Maybe take my flow down a little bit, that'll help me be slightly more subtle here. I'm just going to follow all these little trails as closely as I can get. And you're just looking for what's already in the image and we're just going to emphasize it like that. So obviously that looks a little bit silly, but with this rush job, we'll see if we can still make it work. Okay, something like that. And if you wanted to, maybe you could emphasize down here too a little bit. Okay, let's pretend that was good. Then we go over to this little arrow here, and you can actually adjust the intensity of 
that particular effect. So we'll take it way back like that and go down in here. Maybe dial my exposure back a little bit, take my clarity up. You can see we've got even more Milky Way goodness popping through now. All right, something like that. So that is our final photo. Of course, you can go on tweaking for days and for days and for days. We could go over here back into our develop module and we could go down to our colors in the HSL panel. And if our preview would ever load, I would show you how we could change the different colors for days and just experiment and see what we want to do. Maybe we want more of a teal look, so we take the teal up inside of those blues. And again, I'd mention maybe we want more of an orange vibe to those reds on the wall so we can get that kind of teal and orange look. We can go down to our camera calibration, take that even a step forward, take our reds over like that. Now we really have that orange and teal vibe, especially if we take our blues over towards teal. So you can really take this a million different directions, but hopefully it was helpful for you. You got some ideas, some tools, and some tricks to editing your own Milky Way photography. Now, if this were my final edit, I'd make sure to go into the masks and clean things up around this boundary here just to get the best possible product I could. But this was just really meant to show you a quick and dirty tutorial on how I would approach editing Milky Way photography. If this was helpful for you, please make sure to hit that like button for me and leave me a comment below. I'd like to hear from you. And if you want to stay up to date with more great content, tutorials, free stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, I will leave some links below for some free presets. You can download those if you like. All right, take care, peace, and I will see you in the next one.